Hello everybody, my name is Travis and welcome back to Outlast. This is the second part, and it's going to be the beginning of the scares. Uh, wait, did I get scared in the last episode or did I just... No. No, not really. No, never mind. Probably be keeping this up again, all things considered. Looks like the only way for me to go. I don't think I'm going to need my flashlight for this one. Or night vision, anyway. Man, I'd like to do a playthrough of, the, uh, of Outlast 2 again, but it just wouldn't be worth it, considering that, you know, I don't, I don't really, um... Uh, wait a minute. Uh, notes. Uh, documents. There we go. Psychiatric Systems Project Wall Rider Mount Massive CO. Uh, yada yada yada, gender, male, okay, all kinds of stuff. Dr. Rudolf Wernick. Or, uh, notation by Dr. Walsh. Morphogenic engine activity plateaued at roughly 2,000 ppm. Unsafe to progress beyond the stage 3 hormone schedule. Spirometry revealed light to medium bronchial accumulation. MRI scans consistent with patients' reported dreams. Walker had, was interviewed in restraints following his self-inflicted mutilations. Restraints have had to be altered to accommodate his enormous uh, size. Extensive dermal eruptions are consistent with failed morphogenic engine cellular activity. He claims the skin ripped from his forehead allows for a truer way of seeing. Seems to have some boyhood experience with Twatara lizards and their per per parietal eyes. He has expressed anxiety about his flesh specifically around his lips and nose. Attending orderlies should be advised to watch for further self-mutilation. The mental traumas he sustained while serving in Afghanistan seem to be retarding progression of the morphogenic engine process. His predominant fixation, amplified by therapy, the manic exaggeration of military security protocol. A continuation of both chemical and physical restraints is highly recommended. Oh, I bet it is. So weird to see like film grain on the screen when the camera is down like it would make sense if the film grain was on when the camera was on the hand the hand startled me more than fucking the guy at the end of the hallway yeah you look relatively normal you know, minus, minus the blood and stains all over. Okay. Oh, and he just, he just, he's just rotting away. He doesn't even have a hand. That's just a stump. They're both practically just stumps. It looks like there's a hand there, but I don't understand. What the fuck? Yeah, that's that's mildly concerning. I don't don't really appreciate that. Can I open this door? No, not yet. No, I guess not. All right, whatever. Is there anything in here I need to be aware of? Oh, right. Um, I forgot to check his notes. Uh, broken man and dead te television. Uh. A crowd of broken men watching a dead channel. They look like patients. They survived whatever happened here, but nobody's home. Pick up the key card for security control. Okay. Yeah, let me get straight to that. Wow, it feels almost... I said it feels kind of like an old, um, like old, uh... It feels like condemned criminal origins in a way. But it also feels a lot like... It feels a lot like Bioshock somehow. I think it's just the glowing items. Because I'm so used to playing Bioshock. I play it so much. Get them out! Please! You guys are in there! Please and please! You guys are in there! Please, 
to my life. It's confused. Okay, uh, whatever. So, anyway. Was that blood there before I opened the door? Because I don't remember that blood being there. Anyway, man. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, it reminds me of Bioshock a lot. Um, and kind of its design, too. Honestly. I don't know why. I just get the feeling of Bioshock. But whatever, that's not, it doesn't matter. It's not important. Well, I guess we'll, uh... Be seeing you another day, basement. Or whenever. Ah, yes, perfect. I, I love to look behind me while running from things. That is exactly the thing that I like doing. In fact, the feature was so useful it showed up in the second game as well. Is there any reason to... Oh. There was a reason to come in here. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really feeling the atmosphere of this game so much, but then again, maybe I just need to relax and let myself get into it. Oh, are those my footprints? Oh, I thought those were mine. That would have been cool. Is that what happens in the cartoons when they try to flush themselves down the toilet? They just end up... <laughs> All right. Is there any reason for me to be in here? Witness? Oh, oh, to get the to get that. Okay, well, fair enough. That's okay. I can do that. Sounds like a fucking spirit is possessing him every time he turns around. Why should we have to pay for it? Why do we have to die? Walker will kill us just for being sick. Who is those people? We didn't choose this. I wonder if this is a hiding space. It sure does not look like it, but I'm just wondering. Oh, that's a way to go. There was no reason to be in here. There, there was nothing. This was just a pointless room. Oh, unless there's something in here. It went to the to the, to the other side. All right. Well, that that's handy. That's helpful. Um. My question is, why the fuck wouldn't this guy just break a window and get out? There's plenty of windows in this building. Like, look, I'm sure that- okay, you know what? I can't see it from here, but I'm sure that if he pulled back one of the curtains, he could just smash one of the windows and- and just get out. I don't understand what the issue is. I don't like having that open. I know that's what I'm supposed to do. Oh, let's see what happens. Trust me, you didn't need to tell me that. I knew from the instant that I heard the chains. I could tell something was up. What if I press right mouse button? Oh, oh, I forgot. That is uncomfortably close. I don't know where to go from here, though. I'm- um, oh, down to the basement! That's right, I forgot! All right, time to go, time to go. Not gonna look back. It's time to go, my friendos. Let's get down here. Shut that motherfucking door, and let's not look back. 
That's the last thing that I want to do in this situation, is look back. Uh, because I'm a kind of a person who looks more toward the future, you know, to the horizon, to, to just what is going on in... Oh, hold on. The witness. I'm already beat all to hell, picking broken glass out of my scalp, a couple cracked ribs. Nearly killed by a deformed giant, looks like somebody tried to fuck start his head with a cheese grater. He throws me through a wall, knocks me unconscious. I wake up, and some doughy old man with a face like an alcoholic kitty fiddler <laughs> in a homemade priest outfit calls me his apostle. I need a... not a job I asked for. There are words scrawled in blood everywhere getting an ugly feeling in my gut that the priest is writing them, and for my benefit. Big fucking guy. The big fucker is stalking me. Found a patient file for a Chris Walker, ex-military police, several tours in Afghanistan. A lot of the blood in this place is on his hands, but not all of it. It's, uh, very profound. Hypnotic Experimentation and Research, February 10th, 1954. On Wednesday, 10 February 1954, hypnotic experimentation and research work was continued in Building 13 of the Mount Massive Preserve in Colorado using the following subjects. Material abridged. A post-hypnotic of the night before, pointed finger, you will sleep, uh, was enacted. Miss Jackson and Pierce immediately progressed to a deep hypnotic state with no further suggestion. Miss Pierce was then instructed, having previously expressed a fear of firearms in any fashion, that she would use every method at her disposal to awaken Miss Jackson, now in a deep hypnotic sleep. And failing this, she would pick up a nearby pistol and fire it at Miss Jackson. She was instructed that her rage would be so great that she would not hesitate to kill Jackson for failure, failing to awaken. Miss Pierce carried out these suggestions to the letter, including firing the unloaded pneumatic pistol gun at Jackson, and then proceeding to fall into a deep sleep. After proper suggestions were made, both were awakened and expressed complete amnesia for the entire sequence. Miss Pierce was again handed the gun, which she refused, in an awakened state, to pick up or accept from the operator. She expressed absolute denial that the foregoing uh, sequence had happened. Ah, so they're trying to create super soldiers is what they're trying to do. I get you. I have the undeniable feeling that there is something about to come my way. Something I not only don't want, something I can't want. Who's, Who's there? Oh, I think he's coming my way. Which means I'm about to take a hide and uh, seek that one later. I'm going to take that path. I'm going to run down that road in a minute. I need to stop, you know. See, I'm pretty sure he's... Wow, this is un some uncanny valley shit right here. This angle in particular. What a phenomenal looking game. Well, from a distance anyway, up close, it kind of looks garbo because it's kind of old, but... Yeah, this game, this game is aged. That much is clear to me. Okay. Alright. Uh, anyway, I'm sorry, I gotta end this episode here, so thank you so much for watching. I will get back to this as soon as I can. So thank you so much for watching, really appreciate you sticking with me through this. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment down below to tell me what you think. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date, share the videos to spread a good word, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, friends.